Just before we continue with today's video, I do want to tell you about something that has become a key part of my wellness routine, and that is AG1. Making your daily AG1 could be simpler. You take a scoop of this stuff, you put it in this bottle, you shake it up, and you're good to go. And you might be thinking, oh, Simon, it looks very, very green. How does it actually taste? I'll tell you. It doesn't taste as green as it looks. It's kind of vanilla-y, pineapple-y. They told me that, but after I tasted it, I was like, oh yeah, now I see it. It's, it just tastes good, it's easy to drink. Look, I've been drinking AG1 for a while. It's been a few years now. They've been a sponsor for a long time. And I just keep coming back to it every day because it's so simple. It's a one-stop shop for nutrition. It packs in everything you need into a single scoop. Vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, even immune support. And here's the kicker. AG1 is NSF certified for sport. That is the gold standard. It means you're getting the highest quality ingredients with no compromises. No gluten, no eggs, no sugar added. It's nut-free, dairy-free, it's clean, and it works. So if you're looking to simplify your wellness routine, invest in your health and prioritize your gut health, AG1 is the way to go. And here's the best part. If you click the link below or go to drinkag1.com shadows, you'll get a whole year's supply of immune supporting vitamin D3K2 and five travel packs absolutely for free. Thanks to AG1 for sponsoring this video and let's get into it. It's common knowledge at this point that governments around the world are constantly listening to us through our devices. What was once thought to be basically a conspiracy theory is now just a fact of life, especially after it was confirmed by Edward Snowden that the NSA had been illegally spying on millions of emails, phone calls, and text conversations. Despite the initial media controversy when the documents were first leaked, no one was ever held responsible for the mass surveillance, and governments still continue to listen. It is assumed that they generally scan for keywords or phrases indicating criminal activity or terrorism-related threats that might warrant further investigation. Because of this, organized crime has been in a constant arms race with the authorities, trying to find or develop devices and software to encrypt their communications and continue their business with some privacy. So, in 2018, criminals must have been quite excited to learn about the newest encryption service, Anom, which guaranteed total privacy and even contained a kill switch to delete all sensitive information if the need arose. However, as they say, if something looks too good to be true, it probably is. And indeed, Anom was not the virtual criminal safe haven they thought it would be. It had actually been sold to them by undercover agents working for none other than the FBI, a part of an investigation codenamed Operation Trojan Shield, which would lead to one of the largest sting operations in history. So, today we're going to bring you the details of how Trojan Shield designed such a tantalizing product, how they deceived and infiltrated the inner circles of some of the world's most wanted criminals, and the absolutely unbelievable amount of drugs that were seized as a result of this. Now, for several years, one of the most dominant criminal encryption services was run by a company called Phantom Secure, a Canadian team that sold modified smartphones. These phones could message one another away from the prying eyes of the government. The CEO of Phantom Secure, Vince Ramos, wasn't too concerned with the legality of his business, figuring he could just sort it all out with a good lawyer and, well, he was doing quite well for himself, selling tens of thousands of products in several countries and amassing a net worth of over $10 million, owning multiple properties in Canada and the US, and even a Lamborghini. Now, as for how legal this venture was, generally speaking, the act of encrypting a smartphone and even selling it is not in itself illegal in most countries, and oftentimes companies are considered innocent third parties when it comes to the criminal activities of their customers. But the FBI did not believe that Ramos was merely an innocent third party and began gathering evidence that he was, in fact, intentionally marketing phantom phones to organize crime syndicates and therefore profiting from large-scale drug traffickers. After a team of undercover agents posing as clients in 2018 caught him giving criminal advice, Ramos was detained by federal agents in Las Vegas, escaped custody, and then was captured again near the border of Canada. Phantom Secure had been shut down, and in exchange for less prison time, Ramos turned state witness, providing all of his login information to the servers and giving the FBI full access to the network. Several people were arrested and charged once their messages had been uncovered, but many more escaped the law entirely, having deleted everything off their phones and gone off grid. At around the same time, EncroChat, a similar company catering to European clients, was infiltrated by French police, who infected the devices with malware that allowed them to read the messages before they were encrypted, leading to many more arrests. In just the span of a couple of years, Phantom, EncroChat, and a couple of other companies such as Sky Global and Enetcom were all being shut down one after another, and criminals were desperate for a new provider that could sell them encrypted phones. 
And it was during this tumultuous period that Anom rose to prominence, promising the highest quality encrypted phones to date. You see, most of the previous companies sold devices that were quite simple, usually old model Blackberries with a miniature slide-out keyboard. This was stylish and popular in 2007, but more than a decade later, well, not so much. Anom emerged promising a revolution in the scene. Gone were the days of old flip phones as the encrypted devices were now Android smartphones, specifically Google Pixel 3s and 4s. Turn one of these modified Pixels on and you'll immediately notice something interesting. The pin numbers on the lock screen are scrambled every time you unlock it. This is to make it more difficult for unauthorized users to figure out your pin by either watching you type it in, or if you're the type to not wipe your phone every so often, by noticing the spots with the most fingerprint smudges on the screen. Entering the correct pin code will open a seemingly normal looking phone where the user will be greeted with apps like Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, even subway servers, and all the other default apps you expect on a new smartphone. However, clicking on the icons doesn't do anything because it's all a fake display. To actually use the phone, you have to reset it from this screen and type in a second pin on a second lock screen, which opens up a completely new home running a program called Arcane OS. Here, instead of the usual apps, the only available icons are settings, the clock, and the calculator. But this is no ordinary calculator. Entering a specific calculation opens up a login screen, which reads, enter a nom ID and password. Once inside, users could then securely message other Anom devices through secure servers. Users are then given an option to set up a secure PIN code that if entered on either lock screen would instantly wipe all information off the device. It can also be set to wipe if left offline for a certain amount of time, meaning that if the device is ever lost, it will clean itself. But there was a catch. <laughs> Unknown to the users was the fact that every message passing through Anom servers would be copied and sent to the FBI because they'd designed the program in the first place and had a master decryption key which allowed them to read every incriminating text. Now, the early versions of Anom weren't actually created by the FBI. Rather, it had been designed by an anonymous person that was reportedly working on the next generation of encrypted devices. This confidential human source, or CHS, who has never been identified for their safety, had previously sold devices for Phantom Secure and was facing criminal charges in the US. However, in exchange for the charges being dropped, as well as a handsome payment of $180,000, the CHS was recruited by the FBI and agreed to transform Anom into a global sting operation. The setup was perfect. Because of their history, this source had loads of contacts in the criminal world and critically already had their trust. In 2018, the first 50 devices were sold in Australia. Encrypted communication had been especially popular in Australia because, unlike the United States and Europe, there are no land borders through which drugs can be smuggled into the country. Everything has to enter the country through ports and somehow make it past inspection and customs, making it extra challenging and requiring extensive planning. It also makes illicit substances much more expensive, so the organizations have the funds to invest in more expensive technology to make the sales happen, another reason why Phantom had been so popular there, as they didn't bat an eye at the $2,000 subscription price that had to be renewed every six months. At first, Anom sales were slow in Australia, but as good word-of-mouth reviews of the product spread, it quickly began gaining traction. Over the next few months, the phones were soon being purchased not only across Australia, but also abroad, with large client bases popping up in the Netherlands and Germany. A sizable business boost came when Anom was endorsed by a man named Hakan Ayak, a Turkish-Australian drug trafficker, one of the most wanted men in the world, with all the criminal connections that anyone could ever dream of. Ayak had been convinced by undercover agents that Anom was reliable, and so he quickly spread its popularity through his many criminal channels by promoting the devices and insisting that his associates all have one. Because the operation had spread so far around the world, there were now several agencies involved in the scheme. The FBI was operating under the codename Trojan Shield. Australian Federal Police referred to it as Iron Sight, and Europol called it Operation Task Force Greenlight. Lithuania also played a key part in the sting, as they relayed the European gathered information back to the US. By 2021, there were almost 12,000 Anom devices in use around the world, with nearly 30 million text messages and 500,000 photos having been sent and received over 100 different countries. Over 300 distinct criminal organizations have been identified through the conversations, and law enforcement got to witness firsthand the sneaky techniques that criminals were using to smuggle drugs, complete with photos, and everything else. Not all of these messages have been released, but the recent unsealed court files show several examples. One message read, There is two kilograms put inside French diplomatic sealed envelopes. Another was a detailed conversation between two people about how much cocaine they had and ended up with one sending a photo flexing hundreds of kilograms of the stuff in his room packaged with Batman labels. 
Others negotiated drug prices in detail, with one explicitly stating that a kilogram of cocaine in Australia was going for a staggering $100,000 US dollars, and further breaking down who was getting the profits from that and how the transaction would go down using various cryptocurrencies. Another group was using fake invoices from the store Lowe's in Carlsbad, California, which detailed furniture items that were being shipped to Australia. Of course, what was described on the invoice as a chest seat was actually filled with bricks of nose candy. Law enforcement also got a glimpse into how organizations use so-called dry runs to test the safety of their route before actually sending any narcotics. One of these dry runs was a group shipping cocaine from Colombia to Hong Kong by hiding the packages inside banana crates. On and on, they openly discussed needing to test the ports in Hong Kong with dry runs before sending a legitimate shipment because they didn't have a corrupt official waiting for them in customs. But by now, law enforcement had waited around long enough. It was time to start intercepting these shipments and take down these organizations once and for all. The first of these interceptions came in October 2020. An organization set up a shipment that had been in the works for months, shipping a huge amount of cocaine from Ecuador to Belgium by packaging the drugs in little hockey park shapes and hiding them inside of cans of tuna. These messages had been intercepted by the US, who informed Belgium of the upcoming shipment. The suspected shipping container was intercepted in Antwerp, and inside, Belgian police found 613 kilograms of cocaine. They also confirmed the name of the company that had aided the packaging and relayed this information to Ecuador, where the tuna packaging plant was raided and another 1,500 kilograms of the good stuff was found in a container ready to ship to Belgium. The following year, a similar shipment was intercepted, this one sent from Ecuador to Spain, hidden among packages of refrigerated fish, resulting in the seizure of another 1,400 kilograms. Now, say what you want about criminal scum of this caliber, but they're certainly creative. The next intercepted shipment was nearly 1,600 kilograms on its way to Spain from Costa Rica, and it had been hidden inside hollowed-out pineapples. These syndicates couldn't have had any clue how law enforcement agencies had discovered their deliveries. After all, it could have just been bad luck with port inspections or perhaps a snitch in the ranks. As far as anyone could tell, none of the drug traffickers were suspecting their encrypted phone service whatsoever. However, there was actually one person who suspected that something fishy was going on. In March of 2021, a WordPress blog post was uploaded by someone called Can You Guess 67, in which they claimed to have tested an Anon device and were shocked to find out that despite appearing encrypted, the phone was in constant communication with various undisclosed servers. The uploader even added, I was quite concerned to see the amount of IP addresses relating to many corporations within the Five Eyes governments – Australia, USA, Canada, UK, and New Zealand – who share information with one another. The post went on to accuse Anom of being a police-sponsored setup and urged users to rethink their use of the devices. And in other words, this could have been the end of the run and thousands of criminals could have ditched their phones and gone into hiding. Fortunately, however, criminals aren't exactly known for their intellect, and despite this viral warning, Anom's user base tripled in size that same month. The operation could have continued like this for years, with police forces watching and waiting, occasionally striking at opportune moments. However, the FBI didn't plan on keeping it a secret forever. In fact, one of the stated goals of Operation Trojan Shield was to undermine criminals' trust in all encryption services, something that could only be accomplished if the whole scheme were to be made public at some point. And so, after nearly three years of mostly sitting on the sidelines, the various governments involved agreed that they'd gathered enough evidence and were now ready to pounce. The day that Anom's deceit would be made public was decided to be June the 7th, 2021. Law enforcement agencies around the world prepared for weeks ahead of this time, doing reconnaissance, planning raids, and securing search warrants for hundreds of properties. Each of these raids was carried out simultaneously across the globe, striking like a cobra and leaving the criminal organizations absolutely no time to react to warn each other. In Australia, 224 suspects were arrested and police confiscated 104 firearms, along with 45 million Australian dollars. The AFP here also acted on 20 planned murders, likely saving their lives. 10 hitmen were stopped in Sweden, along with 145 other arrests. In the Netherlands, 49 people were arrested, 25 drug production facilities were raided, and several million euros were confiscated. Outside of these hotspots, various arrests were made across the EU and in the UK, with detained suspects belonging to some of the most powerful criminal groups on the planet, including the Italian Mafia, the Albanian Mafia, and several biker gangs. In total, worldwide, the arrests totaled over 800, and the seized narcotics included 8 tons of cocaine, 6 tons of synthetic drugs, and 22 tons of cannabis. Alongside the drugs, police confiscated a total of 250 guns, 55 luxury cars, and more than $48 million in various currencies. It was an incredible success. Not only had hundreds of drug traffickers and violent criminals been arrested, but the black market's trust in encryption services had been shattered. 
For years, they had been relying on an app that had been sold to them from the FBI. Nothing and no one could be trusted anymore. You may have noticed that the United States wasn't brought up on the list of arrests and raids, and that's because privacy laws in the US made it illegal for the FBI to read the deciphered messages sent by Americans, and even if they were to read them, the evidence wouldn't be permissible in court. However, foreigners operating outside the country have no such protection, and the US Department of Justice indicted 17 foreign nationals, charging them under the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act. Many of these individuals were already wanted international fugitives, but one name stood out Hakan Ayik. If you remember, Ayuk had played a key part in popularizing a nom throughout the criminal underworld after undercover agents had given him a few devices. Regarding his wealth and influence, it would be an understatement to say that Ayuk had built himself an empire. He had a net worth of $1.2 billion and owned many karaoke bars, brothels, and luxury hotels, and spent a lot of his time living in luxury in Dubai. His criminal connections were immense, as he was a known associate of Chinese triads, the Comancho Motorcycle Club, the Turkish and Bulgarian mafias, and knew scores of corrupt customs of officials around the world. Residing in Turkey for the last few years, I had largely been free from the warrants of Australian police, but getting indicted by the US Department of Justice signaled the beginning of the end. In November 2023, Ayak was arrested by Turkish police in Istanbul, and if convicted of the charges laid against him by the FBI, he could face up to 20 years in prison. This is the highest profile catch from the Anom operation, and just goes to show that no matter how invincible someone thinks they are, the law will catch up to them when they least expect it. Now, no one is arguing that this immensely successful operation was a bad thing, but many critics have raised their concerns about the power contained in tools like a knob. Law enforcement agencies around the world have repeatedly asked for international backdoors to big data companies like Microsoft and Google, but those requests have been fought for years. On more than one occasion, the FBI has demanded that Apple create for them a master key that can unlock all iPhones to aid in their investigations, and each time, Apple has refused. Not only do many view attempts like this as a complete breach of privacy, but they also fear that creating such weapons in the first place means it is only a matter of time before those with more malicious intent find a way to abuse it. The FBI went to extensive lengths to follow international law and to avoid breaching the privacy of American citizens. But if we're being honest, they could have easily done so without anyone being the wiser. It's somewhat reminiscent of Stuxnet, a 500 kilobyte computer virus allegedly designed by the US and Israel. Stuxnet infected hundreds of thousands of devices worldwide, remaining entirely undetected until it spread into one of Iran's underground nuclear facilities, where it came out of hibernation and, long story short, destroyed a large amount of uranium enrichment infrastructure. The point is, thousands of people were unknowingly carrying around a cyber weapon on their phones and laptops without having a clue. If a virus like this could make it into a secure nuclear facility undetected, what's to stop, for example, the US government from designing something similar that infects American devices, giving them their dream backdoor? And, well, would anyone ever know? The other issue facing us now is that despite the widespread success of Anom, it was still unable to catch an unknowable amount of drug traffickers, murderers, and corrupt officials. Part of this was due to compartmentalization, as a lot of groups in organized crime use different communication methods for different stages of a drug deal and only allow certain people to know certain things. This left much of the organization outside the scope of the investigation, as essentially Anom could only peer into one window of the house. Yeah, arresting 800 people is certainly nothing to scoff at, but it is only a fraction of the dangerous criminals that are still operating around the world. And now the governments have shown their hand in and on, they're going to need a new weapon to catch up to the criminals who are going to be as secretive and as suspicious as ever.